Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to News Dose. And to open up the week, we actually have a pretty significant delay for Xbox. Now, I talked a little bit about this last week, but it's now 100% confirmed. And I have seen some differing opinions on this, if this is maybe a smart decision, and whether or not Xbox is maybe lying about this entire thing. But I do have my own perspective on that, and I'll get into all of that today. Also, Nintendo made the news after they posted their financial results, and I, I think by this point it's pretty clear the Switch 2 is sorely, sorely needed. At the same time, though, I can kind of say that it's still impressive that Nintendo continues to manage to put up decent enough results, and I'll explain that as well. Let's just go and get right into things, though. Starting off with a little bit of a surprise. We actually got a brand new game leak, and this is for a new Patrick the Star game set for October 4th. Yeah, we're going to get yet another game set in the SpongeBob universe, but this time, the star is Patrick. No pun intended, or... Maybe it is. I don't really know. Uh, but I do have a soft spot for this series. I grew up watching the SpongeBob show. I legitimately believe that it's one of the greatest cartoons ever made. And surprisingly, there are actually some good SpongeBob games as well. Most notably, I'd say Battle for Bikini Bottom and The Cosmic Shake. Both those are really good 3D platformers if you haven't already played them. However, this new Patrick Star game is being handled by Outright Games. Now, if you don't know who they are, they mostly work on smaller licensed games geared towards younger children like Paw Patrol, Ben 10, and Peppa the Pig. Now, those games are perfectly fine for younger kids, but it is something to maybe keep in mind here to keep your expectations in check. Nonetheless, though, the game description leaked out, and it says, Patrick fans, your time has come, and Bikini Bottom is your open-world playground. You can skydive with just a parasol, search for buried treasure in the dump, or release the rage in Miss Puff's rage room. Use almost any item you find, from the reef blower to a paint can, to make the world more Patrick, and take on challenges only Patrick would attempt, set up by SpongeBob, Sandy Cheeks, Mr. Krabs, and more. So if anything, it sounds like this will be an open world game, which I think is rather interesting. That could make for a fun playground, if anything else. And again, according to the leak, it will be out on October 4th. Now, speaking of new games, though, THQ Nordic just had their own showcase where they gave us several updates for some of their upcoming games. This includes the Epic Mickey remake, the Gothic 1 remake, Titan Quest 2, Wreckfest 2, and Way of the Hunter. If you want to see an update for any one of those games, I will drop a link below. But there's three games in specific that I want to talk about from that event. One is for a brand new game by the name of The Eternal Life of Goldman. Now from the trailer alone, it's kind of hard to tell if this is a straight up 2D platformer, or if it's instead a Metroidvania with a heavy emphasis on platforming. But they later on gave us some more details and they mentioned that player freedom and a sense of wonder is at the core of their design philosophy. So with that, I'm assuming that this is a Metroidvania and they also mentioned that the platforming sections are meant to be challenging but fair. So if it is a Metroidvania, then it'll probably be more similar to games like Ori and Prince of the Purge of the Lost Crown, where those games emphasize platforming a lot more than, let's say, something like Hollow Knight, as one such example. The only thing about this game, though, is that it doesn't have a release date just yet. But you can wishlist it. It will be available for all major platforms when it eventually releases, and I, I really think this one looks interesting, and I just love the hand-drawn art style. Now, another game that THQ Nordic announced was the next Darksiders game. Yeah, I know there's a lot of fans for this series, and they gave us a real short teaser trailer. So there's not really too much I can say about it currently. They just kind of let us know that it exists and that it's currently in development. But honestly... I'd say that that news alone is still really nice to hear. You know, THQ Nordic being under the Embrace group has canceled a ton of games this past year, and I know there's a lot of fans for this series. So at the very least with this tease, you can kind of rest easy and know that yes, there is another Darksiders on the way. And speaking of big franchises, I know a lot of people have been wondering about Tarzir's next game. This is the studio behind the Little Nightmare series, and THQ Nordic acquired them a few years back to work on a brand new IP. So here we are, and they finally revealed a small teaser trailer. It was 
kind of creepy, but all I can kind of say is that it was basically about a zombie pig. Uh, but the big news here is that they are slated for a full-on reveal at Gamescom on August 20th. So that's just yet another reason to tune in for Gamescom this year, which is actually starting to stack up rather nicely. Okay, so let's come talk about Nintendo, though, because they just dropped their quarter one financial report, and I mean... I think it's about what we should expect. As you can see here, there's a major fall off compared to where they were last year. They're down across the board, but I mean, I'd still say for a seven-year-old console that's preparing to be replaced, Nintendo has been scrappy enough to at least put together some decent enough results. And I think that shows more on the software side of things. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But first, let's go and take a look at the hardware because this has been such a big story throughout this generation. The Switch has now officially sold 143.42 million units worldwide, which means, or at least according to Nintendo, they still haven't lowered that 13.5 million forecast, which means that it's still on pace to reach that coveted 150 million units sold by the end of their fiscal year. I mean, when you think about that, there's only two consoles that's ever achieved that being the Nintendo DS and the PlayStation 2. And, and, and one thing about the PS2 is that one reason that it sold so well is because it was also a DVD player. So, you know, this alone would be a massive, massive milestone for the Switch to surpass, and especially considering this all came after the Wii U just completely flopped. That turnaround is just still just so crazy to think about. A big part of their current success right now, though, is because despite this being a down year for Nintendo, they've still been able to deliver new games that fans are interested in. You know, these might not necessarily be your big heavy hitters from Nintendo, but they've been able to spark enough excitement to keep fans interested until that inevitable Switch successor comes out. In the meantime, though, this year they've released games like Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, and Princess Peach Showtime, all of which Nintendo confirmed surpassed 1 million units sold, with Paper Mario, that's actually closer to 2 million, with 1.76 million units sold. See, Nintendo, you know, we've been trying to tell you this, we want more traditional turn-based Paper Mario games. You know, this is only a remake, and it's still doing very, very well. I'm just going to kind of throw that out there, but overall, the fact that all three of these games surpassed 1 million units, I think is very impressive. I mean, this is the Switch's swan song year, where they're just trying to tide us over with some of these smaller games, but yet they're still finding success with them. That just kind of goes to show you the power of Nintendo's IP. Either way, Nintendo still managed to put together some decent enough results, uh, but I think it's also kind of safe to say that the Switch successor is sorely sorely needed by this point. Alright, now one last thing before we go, Xbox officially confirmed the delay for Avowed. This was rumored last week, but it's now confirmed that it's slated for February 18th of 2025, and Xbox blamed this on a crowded late 2024. You can see their post here, which reads, So many games coming. As such, we're moving Avowed to February 18th of 2025 to give players' backlogs some breathing room. Stay tuned for more from our games across Activision, Blizzard, Bethesda, and Xbox Game Studios at Gamescom, including our August 23rd livestream for a look at Avowed. And then you can see some of their scheduled 2024 games, which interestingly enough reconfirms a 2024 release for Indiana Jones. I know a lot of people were worried about that game and a possible delay, but there you go. It's been reconfirmed. And I think for all of their 2024 games that don't have definitive release dates, like Indiana Jones, will get their announcements at Gamescom. Xbox has already announced that they will have a major presence at this year's Gamescom, and because of that, I think Indiana Jones, Starfield, Shattered Space, and Towerborn will all be there with their release date announcements. Now, as for Avowed, though, I said this last week, and I'm just going to go ahead and repeat it here. I agree with this delay because this will give Avowed an opportunity to have more of its own spotlight rather than releasing it during a hectic holiday period. Now, I have seen people accuse Xbox of lying about all of this, and that this delay is simply an embarrassment, but I, I just don't see it that way at all. I literally complain about this every single year. I hate when companies crowd everything into those final few months of the year because something always gets overshadowed. And I think Avowed could have possibly been that game. Even though this is coming from Obsidian, which is a beloved RPG studio, 
it's still not a big brand name. And even though it's a Game Pass title, it would have had to compete with the likes of Call of Duty, Starfield, Indiana Jones, and Stalker, all of which are bigger brand names. I mean, gamers only have so much time to play games, so why not space them out better? More so, for Xbox, I think it's just a smart move to make. Why would you want two big exclusives to release in the Game Pass during the same month? I mean, think about that for a moment. Their goal is to keep you subscribed for a long period of time. So for them, it's best to space things out, that way you're constantly interested in what's to come next. So, I mean, if anything, maybe Xbox is being misleading about them saying this is for our quote-unquote backlog. I think they did this really more for themselves because this is just a smart business decision for them to make. But no, I don't view this as some kind of bad sign for Avowed and its future. From everything that we've heard, this delay has nothing to do with needing more time for development. So there you go. Indiana Jones is in for 2024 and Avowed is out. It is now set for February 18th of 2025. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this episode. But until next time, subscribe and peace out.